but so uh so thank you all for joining um our uh workshop uh for the day is uh captioning methods for um accessibility of instructional videos uh, for ensuring accessibility of instructional videos. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, try to uh, kind of go through, explain a couple possible methods for doing your own captioning and uh, so maybe cover some, um, I hope to demonstrate each, each of those briefly and leave some time at the end here for um, questions. Um, and by all means, uh, you know, feel free to uh, type in, um, a question in the chat, I will try to go back and answer your questions. Otherwise, I'll save the chat and then follow back up with you. Um, you can and you can always uh, reach out to me too, and we can go over anything that I'm covering during this workshop. So uh, just off the bat, you know, our, our workshop today is from four to five. Um, if you're not already familiar with WebEx, which I'm sure many of you are, um, you can see on the screen right now is just an explanation of uh, some of the settings in uh, WebEx. So like your mute button, um, share content, um, you know, how to, how to start and stop your video um, and some other good stuff like uh, more options um, and how to chat. You can click your participants and chat buttons um, if you want to see who else is in the session with us or if you want to chat with them um, either during the session or privately. Um, so go, uh, feel free to, I mean, if, it, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop, try to uh, stop intermittently between either applications or between my demonstrations. If you have a quick question, otherwise we'll, um, I, I, I'm gonna try to leave time for questions and answers at the end. So um, let me just go ahead and go to our next slide. So here, here is our title slide, captioning methods for ensuring uh, accessibility of instructional videos. And of course, my ugly mug there on the screen. <laughs> um, so you can earn CEUs for attending this webinar um, if you're not already aware. So you can go to our, um, on our Academy website, you can go into um, the, um, you can go into our programs and workshops, and we have a little uh, link for web workshops and webinars. And on that page, you can uh, go to whatever event we're currently having, like this one is captioning methods. Um, you can click on that to go to the, our blog post, and then there's an action, um, what's called an action plan. You can submit your personal action plan. And uh, if you submit this, fill this out, and mention how you might use some of these techniques, um, you can earn CEUs for this particular workshop. So uh, to get started, uh, whoops, uh, let's see. Uh, come on. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, my slideshow is not updating. So let me go back, sorry. One more. Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, our objectives for today's uh, workshop is just for you to recognize and locate applications that are readily available for you for generating or creating automated captions or captioning uh, for your videos. Um, understand a process for uh, in each of those uh, applications uh, for e either downloading videos or, or uploading, a, a, adding a caption source and um, or in those applications, also how to use those applications to, um, you know, either improve your captions for your videos or uh, take them from one application and put them back up to either uh, Blackboard Collaborate or YouTube. Um, the, and then the third option here is also a, a identified methods for providing captions and transcripts um, for accessible instructional materials. So why uh, why provide accessible uh, instructional uh, audio and video? Um, so a recent uh, research study uh, done by uh, Oregon State University um, 
it shows that 71% of students uh, without hearing difficulties use captions at least some of the time. 66 of ESL students find captions very or extremely helpful. 75% of students that use captions say they use them as a learning aid, so um, they're by improving uh, comprehension. 52% uh, say that they use it as a learning aid to improve uh, comprehension. And 15% of students don't know how or or don't know how to tell if a video has captions. So um, some, sometimes just providing those um, and giving them the options to turn them on and off. Um, it also helps them focus or if they're in a library or um, and they can't have the audio on, they're using headphones or uh, maybe they're in a noisy environment like an internet cafe or something like that. So captions and, uh, and transcripts help benefits everyone, not just those uh, students with disabilities. Um, and again, uh, f you know, using transcripts for like uh, podcasts and things that you point out to, hopefully, you know, a lot of podcasts uh, do provide transcripts. It might be somewhere else on the page, some don't. So um, in some cases like that, if you have an accommodation, you can reach out to Access and Disability Services and they can, um, possibly provide you with either a, a transcript or um, captioning for um, those particular um, podcasts and things like that. Um, but as far as uh, what I'm covering today is just kind of some um, do-it-yourself or DIY uh, captioning uh, using some of the applications uh, that are available to you here at Harper College. Um, so, um, with that said, uh, just the picture here is just kind of uh, an example of in YouTube. Um, you can have a video, um, you know, you can have, uh, you can turn on a transcript next to uh, a video. Um, as long as you have those captions there, um, it, it will actually, uh, it's kind of an interactive transcript in that it will follow along with your video as you're playing it. Um, so this is helpful um, for people that are watching the video and being able to follow along. They can also search um, that video um, for, the, for content a little quicker. Um, so the next one, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna, kind of hop back and forth here. Um, but my next slide here um, is uh, Blackboard Collaborate. So um, in Blackboard Collaborate, if you use Blackboard Collaborate, um, there's different ways of accessing uh, Blackboard Collaborate. You can either go to, in your course menu, to Tools and Communication, and then go into Blackboard Collaborate there. Or you can, um, um, you can go under, um, your course tools underneath your course menu, um, talk, or uh, course management is right under this, uh, your, your course menu. And you can select uh, course tools and then Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and that'll take you to the same spot. And once, you're, once Blackboard Collaborate opens, um, you're gonna see um, your, it's kind of like the standard landing page for Blackboard Collaborate up in the top corner of your, um, your Blackboard Collaborate page, you can click the menu, which is three lines up in the very top. It's usually right above the, the door or the, the, the door of your course room. Your course room's always on top when you go to Blackboard Collaborate. Um, whatever course you're in, that's the current course room. You can, um, it's above the door is the menu. And then that opens up, uh, up at the top here or top right, um, you can, when it opens up the course menu, you have a choice. You can either choose sessions or recordings. If you click on recordings, um, you can go there, um, select on the little circle at the very right hand side of your, your recording. And you can select um, what's called the recording options. Um, and that a little pop-up menu will show up and you can download your video. So then you can download your video to your, your desktop and I will demonstrate that in just a minute. Um, and then after that, um, and I'm gonna uh, explain to you, demonstrate it as well. Um, you can also, and the same uh, recording options dropdown menu, you also have the choice where you can click that same option, recording options and, and just 
further below download, you can also add a caption source. Now, if you don't have an, uh, uh, a caption source or if you don't ha already have a transcribed, um, a transcript or cr closed caption file for your video, I'm gonna show you how to do that with um, Microsoft Stream. So let me first demonstrate real quick. I'm, um, I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully I'm still logged into Blackboard. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna share uh, my web browser. Hopefully it's the right web browser. Um, not loading. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing here. see here okay let me jump back here okay. I don't know if my computer's just running slow or it's just not behaving let me try this again There we go. Let me try that again. Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> I apologize i don't know why it's trying to sh there it was sharing the wrong browser okay so let me try this once again i'm going to do share content i'm going to share my screen okay so now hopefully you can see my screen i'm going to go over to um, blackboard i may have to fix the size of my screen here okay so in blackboard uh like i said you can go to your course menu um, if you already have a link to blackboard collaborate in your menu you can go there or you can go to tools and communication and scroll down to blackboard uh, collaborate ultra and go there or you can go under your course menu here under course tools you'll have to you may have to toggle open course tools and select blackboard collaborate ultra okay and then when blackboard collaborate op opens again whatever course you happen to be in at the time um, you will see your course room right at the top just under the black bar and then just above that is your core uh, your collaborate uh, menu and when that you open that, slide it open, you can go to recordings. And then if you're um, if you don't happen to see any recordings, um, if you haven't done any recently, um, maybe it was a month ago or or more, uh, you may have to go up here to the top and choose um, instead of recent recordings, recordings in a range. And um, you may have to uh, change the date. Like, so in this case, if I wanted to, um, I could go back a uh, number of months. Um, I may even go back almost a year. I, I think I have some in that amount of time, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose January 1st. And then there's, there's a recording. And so, it, if uh, you may have a whole bunch of recordings here, but at the very right side of your um, recording, uh, there's the recording options. You can hover over recording options. The, some people call it the sideways snowman because it's a little circle with three dots. If you click that, then a little menu will pop up and you can either download your uh, current recording. Um, and then I will show this, um, again later um, but if you, you can also add a caption source and then um, it, when you do that you can navigate 
to wherever your your caption file is uh, if you do had downloaded um, a caption um, or something on your on your computer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I got a few of these right up here. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. Um, so that's that's how to download your videos from Blackboard Collaborate, and it's also how you can. Um, upload a caption source is from the recording options and um, the add caption source or download. Okay, so uh, going over to Microsoft Office 365, um, I, I could go more through the PowerPoint, but in an attempt to save time, and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of walk you through um, how to access uh, Microsoft Stream um, in Office 365. So Harper College provides all faculty, uh, adjunct faculty and staff, um, Office 365. Um, you can just log in to office.com uh, and log in with your credentials, uh, your, your, the same, um, your same full email and your, um, your login credentials. And if you don't happen to see Microsoft Stream on your um, getting started page or whatever, this is what kind of like the landing page for Office 365 when you log in, um, you can either scroll down and there's a little icon for stream, or you can select at the very bottom, there's this little like box, uh, four boxes, it's all apps, you can click that and you should see all of the uh, applications available to you in Office 365. So um, just scrolling through it, uh, there's there's quite a few, uh, but uh, it's in this first bunch, um, it's Microsoft Stream. So when you select on that, it will, um, it will open um, Microsoft Stream. And let me see. Uh, already have it open. I tried to open some of this to speed things up, and of course it's not gonna help a whole lot, but let me go ahead and try it. Um, so um, once Microsoft Stream opens, you'll see a little um, similar um, uh, getting started page um, in Microsoft Stream. It usually has this little slider um, at the top like this. And uh, you can um, you can see down here below. Um, you can uh, down the bottom. You can see um, you, some options on how to use it. Um, you can follow some channels. Uh, you can follow if we. I think we have an academy channel. You could probably follow that. Um, but up at the top, um, you have. Uh, a few options or a few tabs discover my content create and search so if you're going to upload a video you want to go under create and upload the video that you may have downloaded from blackboard collaborate and you click upload video and when that pops up you can either drag your video on top of the screen or you can select this browse button um, and if you browse it'll just uh, if I click on that, it's just going to pull up your uh, default. If you're on Windows, it's going to be um, your Windows Explorer window. Um, and if you're um, on like a Mac, it's going to pull up a Finder window for you to locate that the video to place up it to Office or to Microsoft Stream. Um, so if I scroll down here, I'm going to find one of my videos, or actually, I'm going to go under here, um, select the video and click open. And then it, you can see here what it does is when you're um, initially uploading, um, you can uh, change the title of your video. Uh, you might add a description, uh, put what, vid, uh, what language it is. By default, it should be English. Um, and then you can also set some permissions, uh, whether you want everyone in the college to see your video you can uncheck that. Um, it'll ask you, do you want to remove company company wide access? So yeah, I, maybe at this point I do because I might want to trim my video. So you can do some trimming, and you can do some screen uh, screen sharing or screen capturing as well in Microsoft Stream. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes for the moment. Um, 
and then um, you can share with certain people um, or you can share uh, with a, a, a certain channel or group as well. So um, I'm just going to try to do this real quick. I'm going to close this up. Um, and then when I'm ready, uh, ready to go, I can either say publish. Um, up at the top, it'll tell me approximately how long it's taking. Um, and I'm going to just for the um, for um, to save time, I'm just going to show you where it ends up. So once your video uploads, you can go under my content and videos. This will just take a minute. All right, and then right now you can see up here, uh, this one's processing. I already uploaded it once before today. Um, and so uh, you'll see a list of your videos here. Um, and you can either go directly to the video or you can come over here to the right hand side of your video and again, uh, update those video update, uh, details. Um, so um, if I, if I just go into it, you can, so just remember this little pencil icon, that's how you edit uh, some of the um, settings and the transcript and, and all that good stuff or download your captions, but we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna go to the video um, that I've already published. And as you can see, as it loads, my uh, transcript on the side loads or, or my my captions. So um, I, Accessibility. Let me just pause this for a minute. Um, so then here's my video um, on the side here. And uh, what you can do um, is uh, just kind of listen through it. Um, this one's fairly short. I think it's a minute and 10 seconds. Um, you can uh, you can also, if you want to, just right away start uh, repairing the auto um, auto captions that it generates. Um, you can right over here to the right hand side above the transcript, you can click the little pencil icon and I could start uh, working and, and updating this particular, um, this transcript. So um, you can see here, um, let me jump to this one. I really want online to be all one word. And when I'm done, I can hit save. Um, and, or I can, so I'm going to pause again. So you can go through and start to uh, repair your captions. Um, and then when you're done, uh, you can just uh, click this to view the captions again, or to view the regular transcript. Um, to edit again, you can click it. And again, if you want to, if you, as you're typing, or if you want to fix it as you're typing, you can always click this little option here replay this video segment. So if you, if something just doesn't sound quite right, you can, uh, um, you can jump back and listen to it again. Um, now, personally, um, I have found this to be, you know, it's, it can be, um, it, you know, it works um, for the most part. Um, it can be frustrating. So um, more times than not, um, what I like to do uh, is really, I like to download the caption file um, and I open it in a, a text editor and and I, I go through it quick and fix any of the misspellings. To me, it just, if it, for me personally, it goes a little quicker editing in, in a text editor. Now, when I say a text editor, that's something like um, um, on Windows, um, it would be like uh, if you go under Windows Accessory or Start Menu, Windows Accessories, you can go to Notepad. Notepad's on every single uh, Microsoft computer, or should be uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, if you're on a Mac, you may ha uh, have to use something like TextEdit, which is usually is built-in um, application to the Macintosh. Otherwise, you can open it with uh, just about anything else. But uh, so let me uh, show you that process. So if you're on your video, we're going to go back to the video details. So just beneath your video, um, you've got share, add to watch list, like you have this three little dots here. Um, that's again, the video update video update or details. Boy, I keep mixing that up. Sorry. Um, update video details. So you can click that and that'll go to this page. 
that again has some you can up um, fix the name of your uh, add a description um, so that's the details here on the side um, if it hasn't already um, I you know you can select English um, I you know I, I guess for whatever reason it's saying um, I've already done that or it's already recognized it so um, it says you have changed your video language after uploading a caption or caption file so um, I'm gonna try to dis or just disregard that for the moment in the middle of this uh, of the screen is your permissions again a lot you can turn on or off allow everyone in your company to view this video and then on the third uh, column which is options uh, if you scroll down here a little bit you can see there's captions and you can download your caption file so now what I do sometimes like I said is I'll just download uh, my caption file so I'm going to go ahead and download that. I'm using Chrome, so it shows your download right over here to the side or at the bottom of your browser. Um, I usually go over to this little toggle and have it uh, show in folder. So it's just going to bring up wherever your default uh, downloads are, and it'll show you that um, there. You can also upload a subtitle file here. So I usually pull it down. I might edit it. I may put it back up to Microsoft Stream, or if I'm you know if i if i feel confident it's it's in good shape um i'll 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 just move it directly over um if i have the same video in since we already have the same video in blackboard collaborate or if i was to pull that vid same video down and put that up to my youtube account um you could also move that same um transcript file down so i'm going to go ahead and show in folder so this little toggle next to where it's downloading I'm going to have it show in folder it'll again open up uh, your your uh, wherever it downloaded to in this case it's my downloads and uh, what happens here which is I still am kind of uh, confused about uh, but for whatever reason when it comes down it just comes down as a file it doesn't necessarily recognize that file so as I mentioned before you can edit this with uh, something like notepad or um, another text editor but what uh, apparently you have to do um, is you have to click on this file and you have to add the extension behind it so the file that it downloads is what's called a video text track file or a, a web vtt file um, so what you have to do is um, you have to edit the the title of that um, caption file and add dot vtt and for whatever reason i i'm going to go ahead and enter that and um, now it's being rec recognized by Notepad. Um, so for whatever reason, uh, it just uh, doesn't recognize that. You may it, you could try to open it, but it, what it might say is it doesn't know which application you want to open it with. Uh, when I add VTT, it's recognized by Notepad. So if I just double click on that, I'll show you real quick what the this caption file looks like. What it's going to what you're going to see is um, time encoding before each one of your captions. So uh, if I just scroll down here, you can see um, up at the top it's telling you this is a web VTT or a web video text track file. Um, this is the duration of this uh, video, and one minute and ten seconds in five two eight milliseconds. Um, the language is English. And uh, so basically what you can do is you can just quickly scroll through here and see if there's any other uh, misspellings or um, things that just didn't look right. Maybe, um, again, you're, you're the subject matter expert. Um, you, you'll be able to recognize a little quicker um, you know, how things should be spelt or how they should look. Um, you can add some punctuation possibly, um, things like that and uh, so you can scroll here through here and and if you're you're you can update edit it and when you're done um, you just go ahead and you know make sure you save the file and then I'm going to close this and then at that point I'm going to jump back uh, here to um, 
to stream. You can again upload uh, a subtitle file. Same thing, it's going to ask you what language, um, again, English, uh, and then you can select the file and I'll just replace, I'm, you can just replace it in Microsoft Stream or you can, um, you can uh, put it up to uh, Blackboard Collaborate. So I'm going to go to my downloads, I'm going to select that same uh, file and then I'm going to hit open and then it just will replace the, the, the captions. Um, the, the subtitles or the captions that are already up there. So to me, I think it goes a little quicker when you're editing in, in a text editor. Okay, um, so hit OK here. Now going back to Blackboard Collaborate, um, if I wanted to add that same caption source, again, you would just go uh, next to your recording and then add caption source. And then you would, again, navigate to that VTT file and then it upload it to your video. So, you know, it's always easier, or it, this, the process obviously goes a little quicker if you have shorter videos, um, but I, a, a lot of times, uh, you, you know, it might be an hour, uh, depending on how long your class is. Um, you may also consider um, doing some pausing or, or, or start a recording and stop a recording to make the, the videos a little bit shorter or chunk those videos. Um, so there's all kinds of uh, different ways you can do that, but you can take that same video text track file that you pulled down from Microsoft Stream, and you can uh, upload it directly back up to um, your your um, your videos in Collaborate. And uh, when you do that, um, the it'll show uh, as a closed caption track right there along your videos in um, the, in your Blackboard Collaborate recordings. So again, in the interest of time, we've I've already lost a half hour here. Um, I'm going to jump back. Um, so let me just go back to stream for a minute. Um, and uh, you know you can once you're once you've edited that or whatever again if you have if you're either in draft mode um, and you want to share this out with other people internally you would just want to make sure that you're always um, um, publishing um, that um, so in this case uh, you, it may be in draft mode you want to make sure it's published and then you um, you can click apply and then that way um, you're sharing your video um, with with someone internally to the campus. So right now, um, unfortunately, um, Microsoft Stream does not currently share with students. So that's why I'm kind of showing this process uh, of downloading your captions and putting them back up to either uh, Blackboard Collaborate or um, YouTube. So um, with that said, uh, I'd like to, let me go back um, to, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna go straight to YouTube at this point in the interest of time. So um, if you already have a Gmail account, um, you already have a YouTube account, whether you know it or not. So um, if you're, um, if you don't, uh, if you don't know, you can, you can go to, um, let me open a new tab. I'm going to just go to YouTube so I can show you how I got to my channel. Um, so if you're logged in to um, Google, you may see your icon or avatar up in the top corner. Um, you can either go uh, here where the little nine grid or waffle. Um, you can um, scroll down here um, and go to YouTube or uh, let me move this out of the way or you can just type in, go to YouTube. Uh, it's either way, it's the same thing. Um, so I'm gonna go here, click on YouTube. Okay, and then uh, when you're in YouTube, same same idea, you're just gonna go up here to the top. Um, you're gonna um, select on your icon um, and you're gonna select and you're gonna go to YouTube Studio. So if you're log again, you may have to log in, but uh, then you would go to YouTube Studio. Okay, and once you're logged into YouTube Studio, uh, what you're gonna what you're gonna see. Let me just close this down because I already got it open in this other tab. Uh, what you're gonna see is your chat or your your uh, dashboard. It looks something like this. Um, 
and uh, it'll either sh you can click this to start uploading videos, or you can come up over here to the right right side or just to the left of your avatar and click create and upload videos. It's a similar process as Microsoft Stream. Again, you can drag and drop your video or you can select files. If I select files, it, same process, it's gonna open up Windows Explorer or Finder if you're on a Mac and you're just gonna navigate to your videos wherever they are and click on the video and tell it to open. Um, and uh, so when I when I, I'm going to go ahead and click open. Um, so what it's going to do is uh, this the screen's going to update. And again, similar process. You can update your video details. You can update the title. You can up, put in a description. Um, if you scroll far than far enough down. Um, you can uh, um, it, you may may want to uh, select some of this. Your video may be all right for kids. It may not be depending on your your instructional content. I usually say no, it's not made for kids, and I usually um, say no, don't restrict my video to viewers. Um, otherwise, if if there's some um, content that you think might be inappropriate, you could restrict that to viewers over 18 years of age. Uh, but more times than not, um, and you can see it's generated a, a, a video link over here on the right hand side. Um, but normally or usually at this point, I usually click on more options because there is always more options. You can add tags. So in this case, if I wanted to put uh, maybe uh, this is I'm going to just say this was related to accessibility. I can hit enter and you can add some tags there. Um, this is, isn't necessarily important unless, unless uh, you know, you were, you're kind of sharing this more publicly outside of the college and, uh, or with other people besides just your, your, your class. Otherwise, uh, what you can do is um, the one thing you have to do uh, when you click more options um, is so that you can see this, this down here. It says language, subtitles, and closed captions. So now this is where I can upload that same VTT file um, or video text track file that I pulled down from Microsoft Stream. Um, and you can just click that, same process. It's gonna, um, when it comes down from um, Microsoft Stream, since it has that time encoding, it is with timing and I could click continue and then same process. I'm just going to have to, it's, it's going to open up window. I'm going to browse for that file and upload that video uh, text track file. So if I scroll back up here to the top under downloads and I wanted to up add that, uh, that VTT file or that caption file, I hit open and now it's going to be uploaded. So now you can also use YouTube's auto uh, captions. I can tell you from my experience, I have found that Microsoft Streams auto captions are much more accurate, or I've found have been much more accurate and easier to work with than uh, YouTube's auto captions. Um, it, for whatever reason, I don't know if it picks up my voice better um, or the artificial intelligence behind their auto captioning, um, seems to work better than YouTube's auto captions. Um, but with that said, uh, you you know, then you just kind of go through here. You can choose to put um, different, uh, your the recording dates, Creative Commons licenses, you can or standard YouTube license. Um, I usually always have it set to education um, and depends on, on your topic or whatever. Um, and then up here, uh, so whenever you're done, you can just hit next and it's just gonna walk you through is, uh, do you wanna add any other video elements? Um, though that's like if you wanted it to jump to another one of your videos at the end of your video. Otherwise, if you're, um, I usually skip this one and go over to visibility. And this is where you set your, um, whether you want it to be uh, private, unlisted or public. So just a word of warning, if you make it private, you can't embed it um, on a web page or, or within Blackboard. Um, 
you have to at least have it set to unlisted if you want that video if you want to be able to embed, embed that video um say in like youtube or, or i'm sorry in blackboard like your youtube video to show up in a blackboard page or item um and then if after you're all done and everything's good you just go ahead and hit save so i'm going to jump uh, there's your, uh, once it's, it says it's published, um, you could immediately email that to yourself, or you can just click this, uh, little icon and that'll copy your video link and you can, um, use that later. So let me go ahead and close that. I'm going to jump over to my content. Um, it might still be, pro this particular video might still be processing, uh, maybe not. So I'm mean, uh, basically what you can do or under when now we're back in our YouTube studio, uh, my channel, um, you go under content to see your videos. And then next to that video, you can click this um, again, pencil icon, similar icons for editing. Um, and that will help allow you to edit the video details. Um, again, very similar to what I was going through just before as we were uploading the video. If I click that, you're going to see almost the same identical options. Again, for what, whatever reason, you always have to sh click the show more or more options to see um, the subtitles or the, the information. You can also, from the left-hand side, of your screen, you can also scroll down to subtitles. Um, but I I did it here, and uh, the reason I'm going to show you this is because sometimes um, your video language might be recognized as being English, but your title and description, for whatever reason, might not be in English. So sometimes you may have to select that to select the uh, correct English or correct co correct language. Um, okay, so now down below here, you can see because I uploaded that um, caption file, it's um, normally it would say if you let it do the auto captions in YouTube, it would say English and then in parentheses automatic. In this case, because I uploaded a, a sub or a subtitle, um, it, it says English United States by you. Now I can click this to download those same captions. Or um, I can go over here to subtitles, um, it, again, in the left-hand column, under details, analytics, editor, comments, subtitles. I can click subtitles. And now I can, again, if I wanted to edit those subtitles even here in YouTube or say I, you know, I worked through it and everything looked good when I was over in stream or on the um, inside my text editor, but now it's just not quite matching up or, or jiving or I, there was one little thing I wanted to fix. Um, what you can do is you can actually go over and edit those. Um, you may, again, you might see two or three tracks here. You might see like the automated, or if, if you, uh, upon upload, you didn't initially add that video text track file, you would, you can either edit and duplicate the auto captions or you can add um you know add your same vtt file to that uh, but i'm just going to go in here to edit to show you what that looks like and uh what you're going to see is a little pop-up window now um let me see if i'm going to try to minimize my screen here a little bit so control z makes and uh, nope it's not doing it. i'm sorry control minus it should shrink it down it's it's doing something to my timeline down below, but let me let me show you what you're going to see. Maybe I should. I'm going to try to maximize this here. So what you'll see is on the left hand side, you're going to see your captions. I can scroll through there, and you can see the timings, and you can go right through, and look. You can look at them here. You check the the spelling. You can edit here and it'll jump through uh, your video, or you could just start right at the beginning. I'm gonna jump all the way back to the beginning and you can play it. To check the accessibility of a PowerPoint presentation in Microsoft PowerPoint. So um, you, can, you can update the, the captions right here. Um, you can click this plus sign if you need 
to separate, like maybe, uh, so best practice for cap, or at least closed captioning or closed captions is you really shouldn't have more than 32 characters in a caption. So depending on how fast you're talking or, um, you know, it, it just depends. Um, like I said, Microsoft Stream does a good job for uh, for whatever reason of breaking these um, your your speaking points into shorter phrases. So to me, uh, rather where YouTube's auto captions, you might have three or four lines within a certain timing. So to me, it's I productivity wise, I can work through um, by by using Microsoft Stream for the captions and uploading them to YouTube. For me, whatever reason, it, it just works better. And it the the shortness of the phrases um, are a little more accessible um, for people that are, are doing using captioning. Um, so um, but you can adjust timings. Um, you could if you needed if you wanted the 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 caption to hang a little bit longer, you could add a couple uh, seconds to that caption. You may have to adjust. You can also, so um, again, your captions are on the one side, you can undo and redo. Your video is on the other side. You can use this checkbox to pause so that if you just start typing, it's gonna pause the video. It's not gonna keep moving on. And then down at the very bottom, you'll see there's a timeline and that timeline shows um, your subtitles across the top. Um, and it also shows the audio track uh, down below. Now the audio track is helpful because um, as, as you're working through this or as you're, if I, you can move your timeline to go further through your video. Um, but in some cases you can adjust um, right here, you can select a caption and you can, again, you can adjust the timing by pulling, pulling this box back and forth, you know, um, like in this case below where I'm moving uh, this box, I can see the audio file and there's no audio directly below here. So I might want to bring it back or you can let that audio or that caption hang there until the next one starts so sometimes you may it, it helps to kind of adjust um, your timings um, to make sure that uh, you know so the, just to make sure that it's it's matching up with your your audio so I'm running out of time here um, you can always save draft to save the work that you've been doing and you can publish uh, when you're done okay so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and publish and uh, once it's done, um, I can go back to um, my channel content. And then here I can, um, you know, I can either click on the image, I can watch on YouTube. Um, but then if I, do, if I click on it now, um, what you can do is, uh, you can open up that transcript as I showed you before next to your video and that's helpful for students. Um, the way to open up a transcript is just below your video. You can choose these three dots. There's you've got the uh, like, dislike, share, save, and then this three, uh, these three dots, which is like more options. You can click that and tell it to open transcript. And then that open transcript will show up here over on the side. Um, so, um, now if you wanted to, um, you know, uh, you can go ahead and play it and then it will update as it's go as it's playing. Um, so as a quick transition, um, I also wanted to cover just briefly some information about transcripts. So, uh, just to give you an example, a quick way that you can do a transcript and you you may need to do some formatting, uh, but what you can do is up here at the top next to your transcript, you could um, go over here and um, you could turn on or off the timestamps. And what you can do is um, go up to this top one um, and just uh, let's 
just highlight across your whole transcript. Whoops, can't go too far. Um, I'm just highlighting across that transcript. I'm copying the transcript. So I'm just highlighting across it, um, copying it. And then what, I, what you could do is you can, again, you could open up um, Notepad. So in this case, um, I would just go over here to Windows uh, Start button. I'm just scrolling down to, um, I, I usually use Windows or uh, another app, a text editor called Notepad++. It's a free download. Um, I like it better than Notepad because it actually shows your line numbers and other things like that. But um, if you go down to Windows Accessories and then Notepad, I'm going to go ahead and open Notepad. And then what I can do here is I can just uh, um, Control V or um, Edit Paste and it'll drop in your, your transcript. Now, uh, I, like I said, this is only a minute and 10 seconds, so that's why this is such a short transcript. Um, but I might not like how this is necessarily um, formatted, right? So, uh, or if best practice is uh, in a transcript for, for both video and audio is if you have more than one speaker, you would, uh, you would um, say speaker one, speaker two, or instructor, student one, student two, depending on, or like if it's an interview, a back and forth, the, 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 it's um, for good accessible transcript, you would have, uh, you would add that in there. You would also add in, if there's any visual um, information on in the video that might not have been conveyed through audio, you may want to put in um, a, an explanation or a descriptive audio for that visual image. Another thing you could do as well is, uh, you know, possibly um, like for an example, when if you've ever watched captions on TV, um, you'll see like in brackets, uh, car door slamming, uh, student raising hand, things like that. So thing, things like that are in your video or in your audio. Um, you could do that. So in this case, for this particular transcript, um, I would probably uh, adjust some of these lines. Um, and in this case, I didn't, I, I didn't even want this broken. I may even go back and fix my captions after working on my transcript um, because I want this to kind of flow more like um, actual speaking. So um, breaking this, you know, you can do line breaks by all means. Um, but uh, um, I would do something like um, select the review tab and choose check the check accessibility option. So I'm gonna get rid of that extra punctuation. Anyways, I think you get the idea. So you can um, then uh, you can go ahead in notepad is just save that as a text file. So um, you can also save transcripts as Word documents. Um, but for the most part, it's recommended uh, to save it either. Uh, most transcripts are more accessible as a text file or an HTML file for assistive technology or for uh, st students with disabilities. Um, Word documents work too, but then they got to fight uh, the some of the controls in Microsoft Word um, if they're not familiar with that. So text files and uh, text files and HTML files are all to students with disabilities. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, in this case, I could just, you know, call it whatever I want, um, you know, uh, PowerPoint transcript or, or whatever, um, and just save that, uh, I'll just call PPT um, access um, check or something like that. And then save that. And then you can just add that as an attachment to an item um, next to your video. If you're embedding, remember, uh, uh, if you embed video inside of Blackboard, that now you could just add that as an attachment next to that video. 
um, so that you have a transcript of your video or um, if it's an audio file that you placed in Blackboard, you could also have a transcript for your audio file. So I, I, I'm sorry I only got five minutes, but um, I and I would cover, I was going to try to cover up more. There are online tools for um, for doing transcripts. Um, you can, uh, one is called Otranscribe. Um, you can upload a video and uh, you, as you're watching the video, you can just type in um, while uh, while that's going, you can type it in or you can like do something. I've seen people add like an extension to Chrome where they can talk right into uh, Otranscribe. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, different tools and different things. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I've, I've taken way too long time. I was hoping to provide more time. Um, for uh, questions, um, and I did see there were a couple questions. Um, so, uh, Stephanie, I think you were asking whether it automatically does it automatically add the captions. Um, so, I don't know if it, if you were talking about Stream or um, uh, YouTube, but they um, it, there it should automatically do the 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 captions it may take a little while depending on the length of your video it may take a little while for the uh captions to get updated um, yes thanks chris i i think when i asked that then you you ended up answering it but i did have another question um, uh -huh. when you when you made the edit or i'm sorry the transcript show next to the youtube if yes. i click that in my youtube channel does that mean every time a student accesses that link that the transcript no it does shows? not okay. unfortunately that's just kind of a user um a user preference, uh, whether to see the transcript or not. But you could mention it right. to your students, like, hey, next to my video, if you go next to the, the share or sa uh, save option, you can turn on a, a text transcript. Yes, I just yep. wanted to know if that's a good uh, note to add to that so they would know to do that, yeah. Sure, okay. sure, yeah. Um, and then I, uh, let's see, uh, was there some other, I see, uh, um, uh, uh, so unlisted or, or will the uh, email. So here's what I can do right now. If you really want me to share this presentation immediately, I can go in here right now, I believe, and click transfer. And I can share this presentation immediately with you. Um, let me see if I can find it quickly. Um, nope. Let me see. I got to go up here. Um, scroll down um, so I can click this and click open and what that's going to do is I, I, I can actually I'm going to push it and or I think I already did maybe um, I could share that file and you can download it otherwise uh, we will uh, um, place the the presentation and the recording on our uh, our video text or our I'm sorry captioning methods uh, post in um, our Academy website. So let me go back through that one more time. Um, I'm going to close this down. Um, so if I go back to uh, share content and I'm going to share my screen one more time. So uh, let me show you where that is at. So uh, on our Academy website, if you go, uh, you can, if you're on our homepage, um, on our homepage, you can go to programs and workshops. Um, let me just click it here so I can show you. Um, if you scroll down, there's workshops and webinars. That takes you to our workshops and what used to be our workshops and webinars page. It still is, uh, but it's now titled professional development opportunities. And if you scroll down, we have all our upcoming opportunities um, coming up this year or this rest of this semester um, under captioning methods for ensuring accessibility for instructional videos that's just going to go open up this page same same page uh, if you scroll down you can submit your personal action plan uh, if you um, how you might use some of this information that i covered today or you can um, uh, we'll, we'll add the powerpoint uh, file here as well as the recording. Um, we should be able to get that up by the end of this week for you. So, um, and if, again, if you have any questions or if there's just something that I didn't cover or that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, 
um, as because I did put some links inside of the presentation. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to spend a little time with you to to help you get started. Um, you know, so uh, what a lot of times what ends up happening is if you don't have a student with this disability, a lot of times you um, you know all of a sudden you're going to have to scramble to get all this stuff together and and maybe it's not in the right place uh, but anything that you can do to kind of provide captioning and transcripts ahead of time is sure going to help down the road if you ever do end up with a student with a disability in your course um, but again it's not not just for students with disability it, it as you could see by those stats uh, statistics at the beginning of my presentation it definitely help uh, benefits everyone um, both transcripts and and captions um, in the sense that um, you know you you uh, end up um, you just you're giving them um, more options for being able to search content be able to hear it in different ways um, the uh, just different learning styles uh, as you're watching and reading or you got the interactive transcript all of that helps the comprehension um, so um, it's all uh, it's all good stuff and I got the all of this most of this detailed out in the presentation um, and again I've also provided some links out to more information on how to do this um, in in both in um, Microsoft stream and YouTube editing subtitles, um, best practices, um, some of that information, and as well as uh, where, where, to, where that um, link is for our professional development opportunities. So any other questions I can answer uh, real quick? Uh, I, I actually, I don't wanna use up any more of your time and I actually gotta take my daughter to basketball practice. So any other Thank questions? Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Again, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or, or want to go through this one more time. Uh, we could schedule an appointment, meet online, uh, either in WebEx or Blackboard Collaborate, and we could do this together uh, or spend a little time working through some of this. So thank you for attending. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Absolutely. No problem. Mm -hmm. I'll stick around for just a few, and otherwise, I uh, hope you everyone has a good rest of their evening. <laughs>